y'all. We are back for our Women's Growth Series. I am Katie Sweeney. I'm the CEO over at AIM. I have not had a chance to be on Women's Growth Series in I don't even know how long. So I am so excited to be here and even more so to be with a couple of women that actually joined me on a panel at our very first WMN Summit ever last March out in Irvine. Jessica Ayler, Michelle Dugan, Jess, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I um first of all love the background the office setup I tell my team all the time like, I have to figure out that my hair is too dark to sit in front of a dark blue wall yeah. I just like all fade into the same color <laughs> it's not I need like flowers or I gotta I gotta mix it up like that yeah I mean I kind of want this yeah I want the same wallpaper actually right it's it's fantastic. <laughs> well, and you're in the middle, Michelle, in the middle of moving. You've got a new office set up that you're working on, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. And so I have a, a wall that'll be behind my new desk, similar to yours, kind of, Jessica. And so if I like reach out and say, hey, I'm going to copy you, I mean, I might get one a little different, you know, but <laughs> yeah. spoon flower, just spoon flower. You can get any yeah. kind of kiln stick <laughs> wallpaper. It took me, I don't know, 15 minutes to do the entire wall. Um, and then I can just peel it off if I don't like it and it won't damage anything. Amazing. Beautiful. Look at that. We're not only are we talking WMN, we're getting wallpaper <laughs> advice. This is amazing. And um, design. Exactly. <laughs> So both of y'all were at our very first WMN Summit last year. Michelle, I want to start with you. Can you just give us a little bit of a recap of what that event was like for you, what you took away from it, all the kind of the best of the best that you remember about it? Yeah, what I personally loved about it was that it was an incredibly intimate event. And we had never, you know, I've never been to an event that was specifically just for women. So for us to be able to have our own event, we had, you know, the opening stuff the night before, and then to be in this room that provided such a safe space for us to really be able to talk about just the struggles that we have as women, you know, to be able to share all of those same feelings and talk to everybody and everybody really be in the same kind of place because our industry is crazy. Our life is crazy. We have so much demand. It was just such a special feeling. And the way that I think everybody felt so poured into leaving the event was what I love the most about it. And um, it, I mean, it's, it's almost hard to describe, like I get a little choked up because it was such a special thing. We had so many, so many great relationships that have spawned as a result of it. Um, I loved how we couldn't just sit with all of our normal friends that we would sit with. And we met so many people and just the connections that came from it were incredible. I mean, I still, some of like my newer like very, very dear friends, you know, I, they were from there and that's, that's yeah. what's bonded. it. So it's, it's priceless. Like the, what the environment provided, the friendships that it has provided. I mean, I, it, it was incredible. There's no way in the world that I would miss it this year. Yeah. I, uh, it was one of the most impactful women's events that I think I've ever been to. I've bounced around between a couple of different industries. I've been to all the mortgage, you know, women's things that happened when I worked at a, a lender before coming over to the broker side. Um, but nothing really good tackles the, the core of who you are in your soul and the things that you're dealing with day to day. It's all, it tends to be a bit more surface level and a bit more generic. And I think this event just really dove into the, some of the uncomfortable conversations that we all think about, we all want to have, but we don't necessarily feel like we can take the first step to initiate it. Um, yeah. but what about you? What did you take away from that event last year? I mean, I totally agree with Michelle. Like I walked in and, you know, you know, some of these, know some of these women um, from social media and, you know, I was really intimidated walking in there. Um, but it is, it's like, everybody's vulnerable. The, mm -hmm. you know, the social media, you know, stuff comes off and everybody is just, they're they're just themselves and they're telling you their stories and it's it is it's a layer of vulnerability that you don't get with just the social media interactions that we have the struggles that all of us women you know experience on a daily basis but we're not putting it out there on social media mm -hmm. you know we don't know that these people are also sharing the same struggles so connecting in that way was really amazing um it was one of the most special events I've ever been to. And that, so that event, for those of you that weren't able to attend, we had about 50 women that were there when we were out in California, which to Michelle's point, it was very tight knit. It was a smaller group, which was amazing, but we had so many women reach out saying, 
I wish I could have come. I want to participate. And it's this balance between that connectivity and that that foundation of having a smaller group of people that you can open up to, but also extending a hand to as many people as possible. So WMN this year before Fuse. Um, so instead of a regional event, we're doing it at our main event, which we've never done before. So we have an entire day just dedicated to WMN on Thursday leading into Fuse, which is amazing and I'm so proud of and so excited that we have not only members but sponsors that see the value in investing in the women within our community because that's not always something that's been um, been super available and with all of that we're going to have about 450 women at our event this year which is mind-blowing. Um, we have a brunch happening to help network. We have a full day of content. We have separate keynote speakers, agenda that's completely curated for the women in our community. Um, Jess, I'll start with you on this one. What are you most excited about for this year? You know, it really is just connecting with all of the women. I made so many friends from the last event that, you know, I've flown out of state and they've come and met me where I am. Uh, it's it's amazing. Like these are these connections, these friendships are more than actually any of my other friendships. Yeah. I think because we we're doing the same job, we're living the same struggles. And so we can connect in a way that maybe we can't connect with other people. So just meeting even more women and growing even more connections. It's just I'm so excited for it. Yeah, I, uh, I've seen some of the connections that have taken place over the last year and just seeing it, it truly is it's real. And that sounds odd to say, but it's not, I think sometimes we get caught up in the, I want to make it look great, or I'm acting like I'm friends with people because I want to look like we're friends, but there's not really that connection behind the scenes. I know, Michelle, you've got a lot of female friends, many of which were at that event and many that are coming this year. What is the, the best part about this year? What are you looking forward to the most? I, I'm really looking forward to just the energy that will be in the room with all of these women, you know, to have 450 women who believe in themselves and our industry enough to show up for themselves for an event that's specifically for women. I, I just think that's huge. I mean, I love, you know, just like Jessica said, to be able to have that vulnerable space where we can all just be real and put all the fake book aside and, um, talk about our struggles and then also just the empowerment from it. That's what I'm looking forward to. I mean, it's been a crazy two years for everybody. So to be able to feed into that energy and take that home after the event, that's what I'm so excited about. And we've got, as I mentioned, we've got content that is specific for this audience. So going back to some of the feedback that we've heard from other women's events, even outside of our industry, just women's networking events in general, um, I think sometimes there's a little bit of a stigma that it's going to be for people who are less emotional, it's going to be too emotional for people who want to be really vulnerable, that it's going to be a little too harsh. And that balance between the two sides of people, if you were at WMN last year, we had the, and I'm going to mess it up, but it was the kind of male female energy test that we did mm -hmm. like helping people understand which direction do you lean based off of the stereotypical energies that are associated with men and with women. So we took that into consideration this year. So I'm going to give you all a little bit of a sneak peek at the agenda. And then I want to hear from both of you on which part of that you're most excited to hear and participate in. Everything's going to be very interactive. So um, we're not just going to have somebody on a stage talking at you for four hours. It's a lot of here's what we're talking about. Here's the topic. Now at your table, those groups of 10 that we will place specifically based on who you are so that you can meet some new folks, meet some women that have different levels of experience from different parts of the country so that you're able to, to connect with everyone. Um, so it's, a, it's on off all day, content and then engage and network, content, engage, network all the way through. So we've got Paige Chanel is our keynote speaker. So she is the founder of the Birthday Party Project. Um, if you don't know what that is, they throw birthday parties for kids in homeless shelters across America. In about six years, as a single working mom, she has been able to build a network in over 30 major metropolitan areas in the country. Her corporate sponsors include the likes of Good Morning America, Spotify, Target, uh, professional athletes. I have a, a friend who used to work at the Birthday Party Project, and she would literally come home and tell me these athletes that they were hosting events with and have no idea who they were, and I would completely lose it because they're the biggest names that you can imagine. Um, <laughs> 
So Paige is going to be doing something with me, actually. We're going to partner on an imposter syndrome exercise that I'm very excited about and I think is super relevant. Mm -hmm. um, I have had a crazy year, as have many people in our industry, and just being thrown into the fire and feeling like, can you handle this? Because there's a lot of people saying that you can't and there's a lot of people saying that you can and how do you navigate those waters and come up with something on your own to stand and to sit and to own the chair that you're in. Uh, we're also talking about work-life balance, what it's like to be a working mom and how do you balance the your home life and your investment in your kids, but also your investment in your business. Um, we've got a conversation planned to talk about what it's like to be the boss when you're a female. Because um, I think that gets overlooked a lot. A lot of women's group focus on how do you get to the next level, but what happens when you're already there? When you're the boss and you're already at that level, then what are the other things that are impacting your day to day? Um, and then a lot of networking events, really breaking down and looking at what is your voice? How are you saying things? Are you saying things the way that you mean them? Are you saying things the way that people want you to say them? And how do you create strength in the voice that you're presenting to your audience, whether that be your team members, your um, spouses, your uh, community, your colleagues, anything. What is your voice and how do you define it? Um, Michelle, we'll start with you. What about that? I saw you kind of perk up on the imposter syndrome conversation. I did. Um, that's something that has been really, honestly, I didn't even know what imposter syndrome was until I like opened my own company. And I was talking to a friend one day and I was like, I don't know, like, I just feel like something's going to happen one day and everybody's going to be like, she didn't deserve this and she didn't earn this. And, and I was like, should I even be doing this? And I just had so much self doubt, even though I was, you know, I was having a lot of success. And so imposter syndrome has been something that I've really dove into once I knew what the name of it was and how to define it. And I, I think all women, I mean, cause not everybody knows what it is. Not everybody knows what that feeling is and what those, where those emotions come from. So that's something that I'm really looking forward to. Cause it's been, it's been really big in my own life. And I'm, I hope that it is able to help the people that are there that do need that help with it. And just to, yeah, that's definitely what I'm going to be the most excited about. I am a, uh... I am probably the most excited about that one as well, because it's the one that I, I think I connect with the most also. Um, Jessica, what about you? Well, I definitely can, you know, can understand the imposter syndrome kind of went above and beyond with the masculine energy. I figured that out um, actually at the last women's one, because I was trying to like overcompensate for that fear. And so I was, you know, kind of being overly masculine to try to just fake it till I made it, you know? Yep. Um, so that actually really helped me the last year, but I'm most excited for the work family balance because that's something that I've really struggled with this last year and a half, you know, with COVID, my kids have been home with me a lot. Um, right now, my three-year-old's been home for two weeks because a teacher got it um, after like the day after the big boys finally went to school. And um, it's been a a learning process of a year trying to redefine what success, you know, means to me because of having to find that balance. You can't hustle and grind like you used to. And it's been really hard to try to adapt and not feel guilty um, for not hustling. And then, you know, or you're not paying enough attention to your kids and um, it's been stressful and, and I've definitely had the guilt over that. So I'm really excited to see what they have to say. Awesome. That's it. Isabel, thank you for joining us. Um, we're just chatting about some of the, the agenda and the content for the WMN Summit this year and the things that Jess and Michelle and I are the most excited about. I want to get from your perspective, though, because you were with us in California last year. Um, what was your favorite part about WMN back in 2020? And what are you excited about for the WMN Summit prior to FUSE this year? Just seeing like so many other women deal with the same issues that you deal with, like kind of what Jess was saying is there's this extra layer of not just being in the industry, but also being a mom or a wife and just really getting to meet everyone because it is kind of a male dominated industry. Uh -huh. You know, everywhere I go, it's guys and I'm not hating, <laughs> but it, but it's different. The dynamic is different. You know, I can't yeah. just get up and go and do things and just leave the kids to my significant other. You just, you have to adapt to all of that. So it was yeah. really awesome actually seeing other women that are dealing with the same scenario and how they deal with it and actually kind of building 
deeper relationships because we get to see each other on Facebook and post or like I'll follow even some of the posts that Jess puts up of her kids and her husband and it's like, oh, okay, that's cute. But then you get to see this real person and that's just so awesome. Like, oh my God, you're real. I can touch you. <laughs> <laughs> but I actually getting just excited to get out of the house. Like that's, I'm looking yeah. forward to that. Yeah. yeah. There's a real, there's a real authenticity. And I think that's something that our, just in general, I think you find in the broker channel more than other channels within our industry. People who are truly invested in their communities tend to be a bit more authentic and genuine with their intention. But to see that carry through to WMN, I think is something that has just been, I'm really proud of it. And I'm proud of the community that y'all have helped create and foster in this and for people to, to be able to dive in and feel comfortable, even if they don't know you, to be their real self and to have those conversations. There's a couple, I'm not going to say their names because I, I don't want to call them out, but there are a couple of women that were at WMN Summit in um, in California. And I remember one in particular who came up after and said, I didn't know a single person here. I have no idea how I was invited or why, but this has changed my career forever. I'm walking away with 49 other friends and I cannot thank you enough for however I accidentally got on this list because it was the best thing that ever happened. Um, and I'm so excited for this year because so many of the women that have registered to come are names that I don't necessarily know. There's a lot of women that have been around the Brokers or Better and AIM community for a few years that are attending as well. But there's also a lot that are new or that have joined in the last year that haven't had a chance to meet people like the three of y'all face to face and to feel that connection. Um, as well, I was telling the the other women before you hopped on, we're going to have about 450 people, 450 women there this year, which is crazy. We are going to sell it out. It's going to be max capacity, which is amazing. Um, and we also are just starting to see that trend with our community in general. So some quick stats for y'all, because if you've met me, you know that I love data and numbers. Um, in general, the mortgage industry, especially when you're looking at originators, tends to be somewhere between 78 and 85% male, depending on who you ask and what day of the week it is. And there's all kinds of stuff that goes into it. When you look at the AIM community, our numbers, though still male dominated, are closer to 30, 30 to 35% women, 60 to 65% men. So when you just look at our community as a whole, compared to the industry, we are pulling more women into our space. We're creating opportunities for them to feel comfortable, to own their own businesses, to be the leaders, be the bosses, and also still have the balance and the support that's necessary to live that work-life balance. And I think that's a really cool story to, to be able to say, look, if you're thinking about this, come, let us wrap your, our arms around you, come join our squad. There's a lot of us here and there's a lot of women that are here making a lot of noise and rattling some cages and doing some really cool stuff. So with that, I have one last question for each of y'all. Um, if there is somebody who's on the fence, because we do still have a handful of spots left for WMN, and then of course there will still be activities um, Thursday evening. If you're not able to attend the summit, there is still a happy hour after on Thursday. And then we've got our very first female keynote speaker on the main stage at Fuse ever, Molly Bloom, which is also going to be great. Um, if someone's on the fence about coming, what would you tell them? And I'm going to start with Michelle, and we'll just go top to bottom on the screen. <laughs> Honestly, I don't think that, I mean, if you're on the fence about coming, then you just can't grasp how powerful these events are to be there, to be able to be in that room, to take the energy that you come back from those events with, and to be able to pour it into your own business. I mean, it it's priceless. I mean, yes, you have to, you have to leave your family, you have to leave your career for a few days, but the value that you will gain as a result, you will never even think about those, you know, that, that time away, because it's so powerful. I mean, that's, that's why I like, I know for me, I, I look forward to all of this stuff. Cause it's like, I want all of it. I want every little bit that I can get because it has changed my career so much. It's changed my life so much. So I just, I would encourage every one of you that is, you know, can, considering coming, but you haven't made up your mind, just, just come, just do it. Because I promise you, you will not regret it in the end. And your, your 
the results, I guess, if, in your own life and all of these different areas, you'll see it. Some of it right away, some of it, it may be a year or two later, but you'll be able to pinpoint it back to this event and say, this is where I heard X for the first time. This is where I met this person. This is where, you know, my feelings were validated. So it, it's priceless. Like just, you have to come, come. You just have to come. You just have to come. <laughs> <laughs> Jess, what about from, from you? What would you tell? I mean, it's exactly like what you had said before, where, you know, she said she walked in not knowing anybody and you walk out with 49 friends. And that's exactly what it was. I think, you know, this is such a hard industry. There are, you know, it's at least a weekly basis where I'm like, I'm quitting. I'm done. I'm done with this. <laughs> but you have this hype squad. And, you know, I went home on fire. And we actually, after the Irvine event, a week later, the entire country was under quarantine under lockdown mm -hmm. um, from COVID. And, you know, you came back and everything was crazy. And you had these women that all have your back. Um, and now yeah. there's going to be 450 women. Uh, and so just, you know, the friendships that you're going to make, the connections that you're going to make, and then just that fire that you come back with. All of these women know exactly what you're going through. And it is, it's like a huge hype squad. Everybody's going to be in your corner. Um, I've messaged, you know, some of the women that I've met just to bounce ideas off of or, you know, whatever. It's invaluable. Like the the connections that you make, it's, it's amazing. There's no reason why you can't come. Like you have to do it. <laughs> Isabel, what about you? What would you tell someone that's still on the fence and hasn't registered yet? The same thing, like women are different kind of teachers. And if you're in the industry, just like you mentioned with the data that you have, there's a likelihood that there's not another woman in your office, right? And the way that we share is just amazing. Like it really comes from this place of really, really authentically wanting to help each other. So if you don't have that support, come find it because it, it is here. You just have to take that additional step to get to it. So exactly. hop on a front plane and get your ticket. It is just <laughs> absolutely amazing. Yes. Yeah. And book and your hotel room before it's all sold out. <laughs> exactly. Book your hotel room, book it now. Um, yeah. If you haven't registered, we'll drop the link for both the WMN Summit and Fuse in general so that y'all can come. If you really sit and break it down, we're talking about total cost that's less than what your comp is going to be from a single transaction. Like if you walk away from this event and you can honestly say you're not going to get at least one additional transaction that you wouldn't have gotten from coming, then we have failed. Um, I, I don't think there's a single person that's been to an AIM event that could say it didn't have a positive impact on their business in some form or fashion. There's nuggets of information every single day. And for women in particular in our space, for us to just be able to have that opportunity to connect with each other, to share with each other, and then to take those relationships into Fuse. You have a hype squad, as Jess said, of 450 other women that are going to be there Friday and Saturday when there's 3,000 people around and to have that support and to have that to be able to lean on and go learn with and to even, you know, foster those deeper connections that much more. It's just, there's literally not anything like it. You're not going to find it anywhere else. We all need to be back in person again. I need to hug people in real life. I, I can't take the Zoom calls anymore. Um, and Fuse is the perfect place to do that. And the WMN Summit is going to be it's going to be great. It's something that our team, our community is so invested in, but the AIM team is as well. And I want everybody to know that we've shifted from being almost all men on our team and almost all male leaders to being almost all female leaders here at AIM now. Um, four of the five leaders on the AIM team are women um, and a, a women-led team. And I think that's really cool. And it it reflects what the community has been asking for and the structure that's been needed um, to help support everybody in our in our space and not just one segment of brokers. So we're excited. All four of us will be there. Come find us. Let us know if you're coming or not. If you need any information or if you have any questions, Isabel, Michelle, Jessica, myself, we're all willing and able and ready to help answer anything that you could need. Um, Thank you guys so much. Thank you, ladies, so much for joining me. Um, and I will see you guys in, uh, in September. 
So excited. So excited. I'm already thinking about the energy that all of these women are going to bring in to the actual full event with all the guys. And we're already going to be up here as they're like yeah. trying to get there. And it, it's going to be amazing. Like I'm, it's going to be super powerful. I'm so excited. So excited. It's going to be awesome. All right. We will see y'all there. If you need anything, as always, you know where to find us. Have a great week.